Okay, so here is your frog book. It is on page 36 in your frog book. This is what it looks like. Let's see. And then here's page 93 in your bird book. Again, we're gonna do the same thing that we've been doing before is that we're gonna read each paragraph and we're gonna summarize it. Again, you won't have to write anything right now, um, but this video will be up there for you to use on Wednesday. This video is gonna be for you to use on Wednesday. It's page 93 in your bird book. Shall I write that down? Page 93 in your bird book. Okay. Paragraph one, the section is where does it live? Okay, let's go back to our book. So our book, the frog is called the water holding frog. Does anybody have a guess as to why the frog is called the holding water frog or how did it get its name? Latrell, go ahead. How do you think it got its name? Because it's in the sand, it blends in with the sand. It is blending. It is blending in with the sand. But why do you think it's called the water holding frog? <clears throat> Excuse me. Why do you think it's called the water holding frog? Because it's big. <laughs> okay, you think because it digs. Okay, good guess. Morgan and Carmen, why do you think this frog is called the water holding frog? You think because you think because it lives in water? Okay, thank you for your guess. Carmen, do you have a guess as to why it's called the water holding frog? Yeah. Go ahead. So, but do you do you have a guess as to why the name of this frog is the water holding frog? It's okay if you don't. I'm just curious if you think you know why it's called the water holding frog. For for it can own body weight to keep from losing this water during the drown mouth it. Okay, so you think that, that the water that the frog holds water so it can survive during the dry months. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to read paragraph one. Then we're going to talk about it. So paragraph one, make it bigger. Yeah, no, I can't see. Hold on, make it a little bit bigger. Oh man, there we go. Paragraph one, where does it live? And it is referring to the frog. So where does the frog live? Let's read. The water frog, excuse me, the water holding frog lives in Australia. Do we know what Australia is? In South America? Good guess. So Australia is actually its own country world. So this is where we live. And Australia is on the other side of the world. Okay. So it's saying that the water holding frog lives in Australia. During the rainy season, the frog absorbs water and in doing so puts on 50% of its own body weight. All right, so let's back up. Does anybody know what the rainy season is? What does it mean when we are in the rainy season? It means that when it rains a lot. It, yeah, it rains all the time. Thank you, Megan, for answering that question. It rains all the time. It means and it, it means it rains. Yeah. 
It means that it rains all the time. So, you know, and for us in the summertime, it's always hot. Well, the rainy season, it's always raining, okay? And it says the frog absorbs water and in doing so puts on 50% of its own body weight, okay? Do we know what the word absorbs mean? Does anybody know what the word absorb means? Me. So let me ask you a question. Absorb. Oh, go ahead, Carmen. You think you know what it means? Yeah, I think it means water. Okay. Carmen, that's a good guess. Anybody else? So what happens when a, when a plant absorbs water? What is it doing to the water? It grows. It does help it grow. It's look around. Say it again. It's look around. Not look around, not quite. So absorb means to take in or to soak up. And also sometimes we can we can use it, we can say it means to drink. So water, so flowers absorb or drink water. And the reason why they drink water is to grow or to be healthy. So in this case, it's saying that the water drink, the, the water, excuse me, the frog absorbs, meaning to take in or to drink water. And when it does, it gains 50% of its weight. So that means it gets really, really big. So during the rainy season, in order for the frog to survive, it absorbs water. So it takes in the water and it holds it. To keep from losing water during the dry months, it creates an underground home to stay in. So does anybody remember what that B word was when, um, when we read it a couple of weeks ago and it was saying that the frogs go underground or live underground? What was the home called? Do you guys remember? It was called a barrow. So this is saying that it creates a barrow, which is a house underground. So to keep from losing its water, so to keep from sweating all the water out, they make a barrow or a house underground. Since the mud is still wet from the rainy season, it is able to barrow down more than three feet. So it's saying that the barrow or the house underground that they build is three feet wide or three feet long. That's three rulers put together. So imagine three rulers and that's how big their house is or that's how big their home is underground. It enters a summer hibernation and can stay underground waiting for the rainy season. Okay, do we remember what hibernation means? Do we know what hibernation means? Okay, so you know bears hibernate. Bears hibernate during the winter time. What does hibernation mean? You don't know what hibernation means? Okay, so hibernation means to go into a deep, to go into a deep sleep. Sleep. I thought I sleep through. So hybrid, say it again, Carmen. I thought they they sleep through seasons. So so they sleep at night, yes, and then they wake up the next morning. But some animals sleep for the whole season. So if it's too hot for them or too cold, they sleep for that whole season. And, and they, they don't wake up again until the next season. So for example, this um water holding frog, it says that they sleep during the whole summer because it's so hot. Yeah. Because it's so hot, they sleep during the whole summer and they wake up when the rainy season comes back. Because if you remember, what do frogs need to survive? 
Water. They need water. And in Australia, it's very, very hot and dry. So they're not able to get water during the summertime. So what they do is they get water from the rainy season. They hold the water in their body and they sleep. They sleep for the whole summer. Okay. Then it says when it senses the water from heavy rains, it wakes up and resurfaces. So it's saying that it stays in a deep, deep sleep for the whole summer. And then when the rainy season comes back, it wakes up and goes back outside. Okay, so that was a lot of information. I'm gonna read it one more time. And then I'm going to ask you guys, what did we learn from this paragraph? Okay, so where does it live? The water holding frog lives in Australia. During the rainy season, the frog absorbs water and in doing so puts on 50% of its own body weight. To keep from losing this water during the dry months, it creates an underground home to stay in. Since the mud is still wet from the rainy season, it is able to borrow down more than three feet beneath the surface. It enters a summer hibernation and can stay underground waiting for the next rainy season. When it senses the water from the heavy rain, it wakes up and starts to resurface. I ask you, what was that paragraph mostly about? And if there was any vocabulary you did not know. So some, we did not know what the word absorb meant. And absorb means to drink or take in water. We also did not know what hibernation meant. And that just means a deep sleep. Is there any word, other words we did not know? Let me see. Nope. Okay, what did we learn in that first paragraph? Where does it live? So where does the water holding frog live? Go ahead, Latrell. In Australia? In Australia. Okay, where in Australia? Where does it live in Australia? Underground. Underground. The water holding frog lives in Australia underground. Anything else we want to add to this? I got something else to add to it though. Go ahead. It come out in a rainy day for water. <laughs> Okay. It only resurfaces during the rainy season. Thank you, Carmen. I'm gonna put the word resurface in this box too, so you, in case we don't know what that means, resurfaces. You okay? You welcome, Miss Yay. To come out. All right. So Latrell said that he learned that they. He learned the water holding frog lives in Australia underground. And then Carmen says that she learned it only resurfaces or comes out during the rainy season. All right, next paragraph, it says storing water. The water holding frog stores water in its bladder and beneath its skin. The water holding frog stores water and in its bladder and beneath its skin. So do we know what the word stores mean? Carmen, you wanna give it a try? What does this word store mean? We 
Alicia? What does the word store mean? Oh, store mean? Mm-hmm. In this where you go to store? Not that store. So not not where you go, not where you go to a market to buy something. Not that store. Let's try and give it a try. What does this store mean? Little drink. Little drink. Latrell, what do you think this means? It's soaking up water. It's soaking up water. So this store means to soak up or to keep water. So we learned. So this store means to soak up or keep water. So we learned that the frog keeps water in its bladder and beneath or under its skin or under its skin. Okay, now it's your turn. I'm on page 93 in my bird book. We just did the first two rows together. So we read it. Do we answer that question? What was it mostly about? Or what did you learn from this book? We also talked about some vocabulary words that we possibly did not know. Okay, this video, I'm gonna finish reading the last four paragraphs. I'm gonna go over some vocabulary words with you, but for the most part, you're gonna be doing this all by yourself. You're gonna ask yourself the question, what did I just read about? Or what did I just learn? So in your frog book, I'm on page 37 again. I'm going to read these paragraphs for you. And then you are going to ask yourself, what did I just learn? Okay. Third paragraph. Living well. I don't know what this word is. I've never seen it. So I'm going to go to Google. I'm going to type it into Google. I'm going to ask Google to say the word for us. Aborigine. Aborigine. The word is Aborigine. And it means a person, animal, or plant that has been in the country or regions from earliest times. So essentially, it's people or animals or plants that have lived in that country or area for a long, long time. So that's something that's going to go on my chart because I've never heard that word. I didn't know what it meant. So we're going to type it in and you're going to write it down. People, animals, or plants that live that have lived in a place for a long time. And again, if you need to, please pause the video so you can write that down. Pause the video so you can finish writing that word down. That word again is Aborigine. Aborigine. Aborigines is the word. Aborigines. Okay, that par this paragraph now, living well. Aborigines used to dig up the frog to extract drinking water. They use the frog as a living well. To gain access to the water, they squeeze the frog. Okay, so what does the word Aborigines mean? We already went over that. It means people, animals, or plants that live in that place for a very, very long time, okay? The next word that you probably will not know is the word extract. What do you think the word extract means? The sentence says, Aborigines used to dig up the frog to extract drinking water. They use the frog as a living well. To gain access to the water, they squeeze the frog. What do you think the word extract means? 
or extract. It says that they squeeze the frog to get water. So we think the word extract means. Okay, if you said to take out, then you are correct. Extract means to take out or remove. So in this paragraph, it says Aborigines, so people who lived there for a very long time used to dig up the frog to remove or get drinking water. And they used the frog as a living well. So a, a water well is a well or a small house that has water or gets water from the ground. This is what it looks like. Back in old times, and even sometimes today, people have a well. So it's like a, a small house that has water in it. So this is what it looks like on the outside. So it looks like in the inside, this is where some people get their water. So it's saying that in this paragraph, the Aborigines, which are the people that lived there for a long time, used the frog as a well, a living well. As you saw in the pictures of our well, is that a, a, it's a place or a house that holds water. And we know that our, our holding frog holds water. So it absorbs water, it has water in its body. So this paragraph is saying that the frogs have water and that the humans take the water or remove the water from the frog to drink. And to gain access to the water, they squeeze the frog. So in order to get the water from the frog, they had to squeeze it really hard to, to get the water to come out so they could have something to drink. All right, so now it's your turn. What did you learn from this paragraph? What did you learn from this paragraph? So going back to page 93 in your bird book, you're gonna answer that question. What did you learn in this paragraph? You're gonna write it in this box. So what did you learn? So you're gonna pause the video here. You're gonna answer that question. What did you learn about the water holding frog in this paragraph? And if you need to, you can go back and rewind back to what I said when I was explaining this paragraph to you. Okay, going back to our um, note, going back to our notes, the next paragraph is feeding time. Feeding time, all right? Feeding time, here it is. Do you know what the word feeding means? Okay, so let's read to see if we can figure out what it means. When active above the ground, it lives in water bodies. So water bodies in this sentence is specifically talking about rivers or lakes, that is a body of water. So you know, like our body is us. Well, the water is called a body and it is that, just what it says it is, a body of water. So when active above the ground, so when it's moving around the ground, it lives in water bodies. It feeds on other frogs, tadpoles, and small insects, okay? So if it feeds on other frogs, tadpoles, and small insects, what do you think the word feeds means? What does the word feed be? What does the word feed mean? What does it eat? Perfect. So that's the word you did not know. You're gonna type that or write that into your chart. So feed means eat. So feed means to eat. So in this paragraph, I'm asking you to write down what did you learn? So in this paragraph right here, what did you learn about the water holding frog? What did you learn? Okay. So whatever you learned, 
you're going to write it in this box right here. What did you learn in this paragraph about the water holding frog? Okay. The next one is egg laying. Let's go back to our book, egg laying. So here we are, the next paragraph, egg laying. A female usually lays more than 500 eggs at one time. She lays her eggs and then goes into hibernation. She enters the state in order to prevent damage from extreme dryness and heat. Now, we talked about the word hibernation before. Do you remember what I said hibernation means? Let's go back to our notes. What does the word hibernation mean? It says a deep sleep, okay? So in this paragraph, it's saying that a female usually lays more than 500 eggs at one time. She lays her eggs and then goes into hibernation. So in this sentence, I can tell or I can say that hibernation means a deep sleep. So that sentence says that she lays her eggs and then goes into a deep sleep. But why does she go into a deep sleep after laying her eggs? And that is our next sentence. She enters this state in order to prevent damage from extreme dryness or heat. So this sentence is saying that after she lays her eggs to prevent from drying out, because what do frogs need in order to survive? Water, you're right. So they're saying that she goes into a deep sleep to prevent herself from drying out and to stay cool. Okay, so again, what did you learn from this paragraph? What did you learn in this paragraph? So there are no vocabulary words that I think that we need to go over. If there's one you did not know, please type it here. So for example, if you didn't know what the word extreme meant, you're gonna have to look this word up. So you're gonna have to go to Google. And whatever words you did not know, you are gonna have to type it in. And you are gonna have to read to say, you are gonna have to read definition. Yeah, you are going to have to type it in and then you're going to need to read the definition, which is right here. You need to hear the word. You can always click on the microphone. Extreme. And it'll say the word for you and it will give you the definition for the word. But I don't think that we need to look up any words here, but anything you don't know, please look it up. All right, and I want to look, take a look at some of these pictures. So here it's telling you how big the frog is. If you hold up your hand, it's telling you that the frog will fit in the palm of your hand. This is a picture of the country Australia. It's showing you where the frogs are located. So in the red, this is where the frogs live. All right, I wanna read this right here, this black strip. It says the term for a water holding frog sleep is a vestitation. And if you don't know how to say that word, just go to Google and type it in. It will tell you how to say it. Estivation. The word is estivation. And then it will give you a meaning for that word. Estivation is another word for hibernation. Estivation is another word for hibernation. And then it, here it says it usually happens in the summer. So I'm gonna put that word in our chart. Estivation. Another word for deep sleep, which also can be replaced with hibernation. Okay. All right. And our last section.
The last paragraph for us, oops, for hibernation. Now in this paragraph, so even the sentence that I just read, or in this paragraph, what did you learn? So what did you learn about the female frog? And what new word did you learn? What does it mean? What does it mean? I'm gonna type it right here or write it right here in your box. What did you learn in the egg laying paragraph? So what did you learn in this paragraph? Again, if you need to hear me reread it, please rewind the video so you can listen to me read it again. And our last part of this activity, the last paragraph is before, after. Here is before and here is after. I am on page 37 in the frog book. So if you scroll down, you'll see page 37 in the white bubble. Okay. In its normal state, a water holding frog is just two and a third inches in length. So going back to our picture, here it is. Here it is. So a frog, when it is normal, so when it's, you know, hanging out during the rainy season, it's the size of the palm of your hand. Okay, that's where your picture is. But after the rainy center, the raining center, when it has consumed half of its body weight in water, its body is enlarged to four and a half inches in length. So before the frog, before it, so in its normal state, a water holding frog is the size of the palm of your hand. But when it absorbs or take in or drinks up a lot of water, it becomes the size of your whole hand, including your fingers. So let me say that one more time. Turn my camera on so you can see me. Okay, so here's my hand. So the frog, when it's normal size, is the size, is the palm of your hand. Here's your palm. This is the part of your palm right here, right here. But when it drinks a lot of water, it's the size of your whole hand. So that's how big the frogs get when it drinks in or, or takes up or absorbs a lot of water. And the last part is that it says when active, and the word active again means what? What does the word active mean? What does this word right here mean, active? So when active, when active, it lives in puddles pools and streams. What does the word active mean? So active means to move around. So here, moving around. Okay. And again, you're gonna ask yourself, what did you learn from page 37? And you are gonna write that in this section. What did you learn in page 37? What did you learn about the frog on page 37? Again, you know I don't care about spelling, so however you spell, it's fine. Just make sure that I can understand what you're reading. So go ahead and copy down the first two we did together as a whole group. The next four paragraphs, so living well, feeding time, egg laying, and before and after, you should have your own sentence. There's no reason why you won't have your own sentence. You're gonna ask yourself, what did you learn in that paragraph? Again, if you need to hear me read it again, please rewind the video to that specific paragraph. 
All right. I will see you tomorrow, which is Thursday.